Okay, we got all the nuts, washers on. Well, they recommend instead of torquing each one down to its complete torque, like 18, 19 pounds, it's just to kind of snug them up, do the X pattern, like that. We're not torquing it yet. We're just kind of Snugging it down. See the X pattern? Do the same on each cylinder. And I know that, that uh, using an extension, in fact, I can get away without using an extension that um, they say not to do it that way with the torque wrench because it will throw your torque off a bit. It's like, come on, we've got a snowmobile here. We're going to <coughs> it's not a race sled. Now, <coughs> I'll show you how I set this. If we can see it, I don't know if it'll focus, but there's a bunch of numbers up and down here, and then there's numbers all around the handle. And there's a zero, and there's an eight, and that's the nine. So they have a line right up the middle. And then if you look off to the side, you'll see 20. So you got a little lock screw here on the bottom that you unlock. And then you find that, that 20 mark. Actually, it's a 30. Oh, well, there's a 20s on the other side. Okay. So you just keep moving that up until you hit that 20. And that would be the zero mark at the 20 line. Now you want 19 pounds, you back it off one notch. There's 19. We're going to put them, yeah, we'll set it at 19. And then what you do is you lock, the, lock it in down on the bottom, and now it's set. Now, you put this on and you turn it until it clicks. And once it clicks, that's the, not that clicking, that click. That means that torque is set. That's 19 pounds. So you do it to this one, that click. It's pretty easy to do. You just have to know those specs. And once you know them, then, of course, you have to have a torque wrench, too. And this particular one has that, I don't know what they call it, clicker, that in it. I also have one that's got a little arm that moves back and forth. And it, you just turn it until that arm comes over to the mark that you want, and you've got the torque. So these are a little bit more accurate, I think. The point is, do your X pattern and once you get them all torqued, it's always good to go back. And as soon as you hit it, it should click. See how it's doing that? That means those are set at the right specs. And that's what the manufacturer recommends. So that's what we're going to give them. Okay, we're back. I don't know when my camera shut off, but anyway. Everything's torqued. Now we're going to start putting the tin on. And you got to put this top piece goes last. But this piece here goes up by the exhaust. And as you notice, I uh, probably didn't notice, but anyway, there's four gaskets that come with your gasket kit. And so you put, and again, these have got the crush uh, ring in them. It goes around, so that's what seals them. And you put one on the inside, and then you take your tin, and you put that in place like so, and then 
we've got two more gaskets, just like the other ones. And they go on the outside of that tin, like so. And then, I find my exhaust manifold. Mm, try to remember how this goes. Goes up there like that, I believe. I'll have to set that in. Go that way. Well, I can only go that way, can I? I go that way, too. Anyway, it goes one of the two ways. We'll figure out what it is before I bolt it up. But that's the first two. So. With that bolt placed, and I'll show you what the rest of it looks like. Okay, we've got the exhaust manifold on. Here I put the exhaust pipe in place in order to, uh, to see it. Turn that picture's upside down. I'm going to get my screen set up here so I can see what I'm showing you. Yeah, well, anyway, um, what we got to do is we got to put the tin on, and we've got a couple gaskets that uh, went here like this. So we will put those on, and then I've got a tin around here somewhere. That intake manifold. But anyway, that's what we've got. I'll show you more as we go along here. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to put this tin on. We've got everything in place here. And uh, you can see the tin. And this is the carburetor intake and that's got it's just it's this is all rubber so it seals itself right on this tin so it doesn't need a gasket what I've got to do is put a gasket on the back of this make sure it lines up with the hole like so now to slide this down in here This has got to back this goes. Anyways, I don't think that's quite right. Well, I'll, let me figure that out and I'll get back with you. Okie doke. We got them on. Kind of a test to get them on. Um, you've got to put the gasket up behind this plate. And then you've got to stick this over the top. Get the bolt through that gasket into the holes and hold everything in place. Kind of tricky. But anyway, I'm going to tighten those down. And then we'll uh, we'll put the top on it, and I'll show you what it, what it looks like. It's always nice when you take this stuff apart to paint it. Um, it's just always rusty usually, because no one ever takes care of that stuff. You know, you get it all back together, and it looks nice. And it looks like a good clean rebuild. Same way with your exhaust. I painted that. You know, just really makes everything look clean, and uh, looks like somebody really cares. So, but anyway, stay tuned and I'll show you the rest of the final here. Okay. Now let's slide the top on it. And this has got holes here, here, and there's a couple in the front, and then you've got these four up on the top. Everything's going to line up. What this does is it... Uh, 
it encases it, like I mentioned, because this is fan cooled, and so it um, has to have that air circulating through there, and then it comes out here, and so you'll get warm air. Actually, your left leg will stay warm, theoretically. What we'll do is we'll put the uh, bolts on that, and <coughs> then I'll throw the carburetors on it, put all the liquid linkages on it, and uh, get the exhaust. Uh, not quite yet. I got to put some items on the other side yet. But anyway, that's about it for rebuilding a two-cycle. This is a 340 Polaris. It's a Fuji engine, and. Um, Good little motor. Hopefully this is going to hold together. I, the guy that gave it, or I sold it, bought it from, he said he blew the piston, as you saw in my other video, and supposedly he split the halves, the cases. The case right down here, you can see this is, there's the bottom half and the top half. Got to take that out, and then the crankshaft, fasten on your clutch here, you pull that whole thing out, and then you, you've got to check to make sure there's no debris down in the, the uh, bearings and stuff like that. It's, it's, I mean, theoretically if everything is okay, and I don't think he did that, but we'll see. If I run it, it blows up within the first half hour. No, he didn't do anything. So, but as far as I understood, and from the looks of the old piston, that he's had it running for quite a while since, uh, he blew the piston, so everything should be okay. Well, let's hope so, because I've got a ton of money sunk into this thing already, and I don't want to spend any more. But um, that's where we're at, so we will uh, I'll show you a final assembly when I'm all done here.